Hello, I'm going to interpret the birth chart of Paul Simon using vibrational astrology. This is the 10th video in a series of 14 videos on the interpretation of charts of musicians. We will be interpreting harmonic charts, so if you're not familiar with them, I have a link to a video on harmonic charts at the top. And here at the bottom, we have a link to the first video in this series, which has links to all of the videos. Paul Simon, here's his chart. Paul Simon, of course, is an amazing songwriter as well as singer and guitarist. What are we going to expect? Well, he's unusually creative. He's a songwriter. We're going to expect 55th harmonic, probably also 11th harmonic, probably some kind of Venus Uranus, maybe not Venus Uranus Pluto, because he's not as, you know, intense and cathartic, and, you know, as, as many rock musicians. He's got a folk style uh, involved. Um, so these are, you know, we're going to expect probably the Venus Uranus, uh, probably his 55th harmonic, some kind of 11th harmonic. Let's see what we find. One thing we'll see in his birth chart that's interesting is that Venus is opposition Uranus. This reminds me a little bit of the, the chart we just did in the, in the previous one, which was Donovan. Donovan has Venus conjunct Uranus. And we noticed that the Venus conjunct Uranus in Donovan's chart was 1 130 seconds of a circle. Um, and it it showed up in these 66th harmonic as part of a very important pattern. What's well, interesting here, we have an opposition with about a three degree orb. Um, and if we if we do the same kind of thing that we did with Donovan's, I, I won't do it where we run the analysis of pairs, we'll find out, uh, we'll see it anyway in the 55th harmonic chart, that this aspect is 27 55ths. Well, 27 55ths is as far as you can get to opposition, because if you go to 28, you, you've go, gone over half halfway. So it's interesting. The, these extreme aspects where you're at the most, at the closest to opposition that's possible, where you're only one, you have a one in the numerator, they often seem to have a particularly strong power in that harmonic. Anyway, it's interesting. That is, Venus, yours are opposition. Um, Venus is on the 4th house cusp, opposition to Uranus, and they'll show up in the 55th harmonic chart as being conjunct. Let's look at his 55th harmonic chart. We're expecting it to be strong. There's the Venus-Uranus conjunction, and here is Venus at late 8 degrees Taurus, making very tight trine aspects to Mars at 7.5 Virgo, and Jupiter at 8.5 Virgo, we'll call it. Um, very close to trying aspects, so we've got a Venus, Mars, Jupiter, showing success, productivity in the, fifth, in the 55th harmonic. We also see the Mercury as opposition, the Moon and the Mars, Jupiter conjunction. We'll see the, here's a diagram of that with the, with the tree diagram. So Mercury's opposition, Moon, Jupiter, 10-minute orb, and also the Moon, Mars, 45-minute orb. So Mercury at Moon, Mars, Mercury at Moon, Jupiter, giving feeling, understanding. Uh, so we're getting a lot of strong patterns in the 55th harmonic as we expected, and we expect to see Mercury involved in a pattern, just like we saw with Carol King and some of the other songwriters, and there it is. Mercury, uh, well, who do we, we saw it with Bob Dylan as well. Um, and here we see the Mercury at Moon Mars and Moon Jupiter. And it fits his poetic uh, feeling, emotion, Moon Mars, Moon Jupiter, conveying those feelings through the music, um, and he is a songwriter. Also interesting, there's a little hard aspect pattern going on here. Venus, Neptune, Moon, where Neptune is at the midpoint of Moon, Venus, and making semi-squares to both of them. So we have a little hard aspect pattern going here. Neptune, Moon, Venus, and there's the midpoint, 24 minutes. Very strong. What does that mean? Moon, Venus, the two personal, emotional, feeling planets with Neptune vision. So this is moods, feelings, inspirations in the 55th of creative motion. And he creates mood music. He takes you into the mood. All, you know, hit so many songs of Simon and Garfunkel hits. They have that mood, that feeling. The, you know, sometimes it's a light feeling. Um, pensive feelings, the poetry, um, it's mood music to, to bring you into the subtlety of the feeling, and he creates these things, Neptune, Moon, Venus. 
very, very powerful. So here is Paul Simon with the strong 55th harmonic, Mercury focused in between these planets, songwriting, the feeling the moods, getting those inspirations, being able to produce it constructively with the Venus trying the Mars Jupiter. So we're seeing the strong patterns we expect. We do have the Venus Uranus conjunction reinforcing that it's going to come out through music. Uh, plus it's any 11 based harmonic is inclined to music anyway, but especially when you get the Venus Uranus, it's going to be there and give that rhythm and that beat and that creativity. So basically, he's a creative, inventive kind of person, songwriter, um, uh, you know, able to do all these things with this pattern. Also, if we look at his 11th harmonic pattern, look at all the midpoints. Midpoints all over the place. He has a grand trine. Sun, uh, they're all in early Earth. Venus at 1 Virgo, Saturn at 3 Capricorn, Sun at 5 Taurus, Saturn at Sun Venus in 11th harmonic means forming, getting to the the structure, the design of the music. Um, he paints pictures. It's like a moving painting because it's 11, it's moving. Venus, Saturn, Sun is creating the structure and the design. He creates the melody line, the harmony lines, and captures, it's like a moving painting. He, he would be great for creating background music to movies and so on. I don't think he did his, a lot of that, but his, his music paints pictures, stories. Sun, Venus, Saturn, Grand Trine, in the 11th harmonic. Um, and he's got all these other midpoints going on. Uh, moon is at Sun, Neptune. Um, so, so there's, there's the inspirational quality of the music. He's not a super heavy, heavy, hard rock type musician. Uh, what are some of the other midpoints here? Moon, Mercury, Saturn. Uh, let's see, Moon. The Mercury and Saturn. Mercury and Saturn are actually conjunct. There's a Moon, Mercury, Saturn pattern here. Um, moon is opposition. It tells me 320 seconds and 720 seconds, the Mercury Saturn. Moon, Mercury, Saturn. In fifth harmonic, Moon, Mercury, Saturn makes painters. Um, they, they think deeply and get the mood and structure. Um, sometimes poets. Here it's an 11. So it's moving poetry. It's the troubadour. Um, telling the simple and clear story. And the, sometimes the history. The mood, the experience goes into the to the cultures and experiences of people. So, very strong 11th harmonic, as we expect for a musician, and 55th, that is Paul Simon. We don't see these heavy rock-out combinations with the heavy, heavy Venus, Uranus, Pluto that we see in some of the more intense rock-style musicians. Um, okay, um, I think that's about it. So, conclusions... Uh, just to repeat what I said here, the Venus Uranus 55th harmonic with other planets gives the potential creative genius, which he did develop, creating the mood and the ambiance emphasis with the Moon, Venus, Neptune. There's no Venus Uranus Pluto, it's Venus Uranus combining with other things and other patterns. It's not a he an emphasis on a hard rock. Um, and probably if he was in a, brought up in a different environment and rock music wasn't in such high demand, it'd probably even have less emphasis on the rock thing. Given the culture and the time he was brought up in, it's, you know, there's going to be some inclination to, to move in those directions, especially because he does have the Venus-Uranus um, conjunction in the 55th harmonic chart. Okay, and I've, I've already discussed all this. Um, the Mrs. Robinson song is, is one of the most famous ones, uh, and that did play a part in, in a movie. So it is interesting that uh, when I look at his chart, it, it, the Sun, Venus, Saturn reminds me of somebody painting pictures, telling stories, um, and he, you know, he did that a lot with his music. And I, he was really the, the creative genius behind Simon and Garfunkel. Um, so, so it makes sense, you know, his chart. Just makes sense that that is Paul Simon, and this gives you some idea of the things to look for in charts. Is somebody's a songwriter, a musician, and they have these kind of strong 55th patterns? You're going to see that potential for creative genius. Okay, my friends, next one of the 14 will be Elvis Presley. You can click on the link here if you want to move on to the next one if you're doing these in order. Um, 
And remember that link at the beginning of this video. You can go back to the beginning of this video and click on the link to go to the first video, which has links to all of them. Okay, thank you, my friends. God bless. Namaste.